Hello everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is episode 103 and this is a crafting or making podcast featuring crochet and knitting and sewing mainly. You'll find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk that's where you can find the names of the patterns and the yarns and links to the things I talk about. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. that's where I'm most active and elsewhere around the web as Cherry Heart. There are also timestamps uh, on this video, so if you're on YouTube, you can click the down bar below. You'll find all the different chapters listed out for you. Just click on one of those to jump to the chapter you're interested in. Or if you hover your mouse on the bottom of the screen here, you'll be able to see the little chapters notched out. So you can just click on it that way. Um, welcome. Welcome to you if you're a returning viewer and uh, thanks for checking me out or checking this podcast out. If you are new, um, I hope you like what you see. Um, I'm just going to do a quick bit of podmin first, which is to talk about sound, sound issues. I've had a couple of comments on my last video and the one before about problems with the sound. Um, and I'm not quite sure what to do about it really. This the comments seemed to be that the sound was going in and out, so I guess sometimes louder, sometimes quieter, um, or that it's echoey. Um, I'm a bit foxed by it, to be honest, because everything is the same. Um, I'm doing the same thing on those last two videos that I've done for most of my videos before. Um, I did a, get a new camera, but that was months ago. So it's the same camera, same microphone, I'm loading it onto the same computer and using the same software to edit it and then uploading it in the same way. So I'm not really sure, I, you know, I haven't made a change that would mean that the sound has changed for you guys out there. Um, certainly I haven't changed anything from my end. So I don't know how to fix it, because um, I don't know what's causing it. Um, yeah, I did look into it generally just to find out and it just it does seem that there's a lot of difference depending on what device you're using. So be it a phone or an iPad, what particular phone, what iPad, whether you're doing it on TV, whether you're watching on a computer, what browser you're using to do it. All of these things can have an effect and obviously all of those things are beyond my control. Um, I tested it out on my iPhone. It sounded fine. I tested it on my computer, it sounded fine, iPad was fine, that's all the things I have to test it on. I did test it out on my TV and the sound was fine, but it did sound different. It did have a different quality to it than I got on my devices. Um, but again, they were all fine for me, so I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But yeah, from that having looking into it and found that the different things can affect it, it did just say that um, the browser can have quite an impact. So if you are having any sound issues, it's always a good idea to uh, close your browser down, kind of refresh the window, retry, things like that. You can clear the cache for your browser and also restarting your computer or your device can also be helpful. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that will solve the problem, obviously, because I can't. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But I just thought that was interesting anyway. I just, if you are having any issues with podcast videos, not necessarily mine, but mine or any other, I just thought that was interesting to know that refreshing your browser or something could potentially do it, or maybe listening to it on something else may potentially help. I know I have had the odd issue with, um, sort of not being able to pick up the sound very well so I might try that next time if I'm watching a podcast where I have that problem. Um, I also spoke to my husband about it because he knows a little bit more than me but to be honest you know we're just we're just lay people <laughs> we don't have any sort of technical knowledge in this area so he did give me another microphone to try I've actually got that up there now um, it's sort of a bit bigger one he said it might be better so I'm trying that for you, but other than that, I'm sorry if you're having problems because I really, I just don't have enough knowledge or know how to know <laughs> what to do really, or even how to sort of 
replicate. I mean, maybe it's only certain people on certain devices with certain browsers. I've no idea. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to address it. But uh, I'm trying a different microphone for you, so hopefully that will help. But other than that, if you can try a few things your end, maybe that might help too. But um, I'll crack on with things now. So this might be a bit of a shortened podcast because I don't think I've got a massive amount of talk to talk to you about. Most of my things are kind of whips, which you've seen before and haven't necessarily progressed that much. Um, but I've got a couple of things I wanted to talk about before they disappear. So um, it's Easter holidays here, so we're going to break up for the long Easter weekend tomorrow. So yeah, I wanted to see if I could get this at least recorded before. I don't know if I'll get it out before Easter, but at least if I get it recorded. Anyway, waffling again. Um, let's get into it. So I'd stopped the things I was making because I was giving a little emergency task to crack on with. So let me talk about that first. So my sister asked if I would be able to make some a couple of things or something for a baby shower she's going to. So I thought, yes, I'll happily do that. So I had a look for some patterns and I found this one. Isn't it cute? So I think it's called Baby Bear Bonnet. I haven't prepared for this podcast, so I've no idea who the designer is, but I will put it up here for you. And obviously I'll put it in show notes as well. Um, yeah, I saw this pattern um, and it was really cute. And then I happened to watch Jules's podcast, her journal number 57, I think. I think she's got another one out now. But she, as it happened, she'd just made one of these and it looks so cute made up. I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to do one then. So I used some stash yarn, which is quite satisfactory. So I had this one in a stash already. And this is Uncommon Thread, Tough Sock. I can't remember the colourway, but I'll put it in show notes for you. Um, I have no idea what I used it for, first of all. I don't know, but I had quite a reasonable amount left. And I also paired it with just some drops kid silk. Um, I just got a few balls of this to have in stash just to pair up with things to make that lovely fluffy effect because I didn't always want to use beautifully expensive hand dyed fluff for that I thought. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be nice just to have something a little bit more affordable for that job. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what the pattern calls for by the way, the two yarns held together. Um, yeah, it's just really cute. It's very quick knit. I think it took me two evenings to make. Um, so the main knit is reasonably quick and then you have to add this eye cord to make the ties and it goes all the way around the back. It's got this really, it's all sort of almost made, it's kind of all made in one piece. So you've got this kind of shaping to get it to be like a little bonnet thing and the ears are all made as part of it. It's so cute. It's a very clever pattern. So yes, yeah, so it took a little while to sort of finish up like the ears and uh, I think I went wrong with my uh, decreases down here as well so I had to sort of go back and redo that and put my little eye cord on. But it's so cute. But anyway, as that was so quick I thought I shall make something else as well. And so I made a little jumper. Now I haven't blocked this yet but I wanted to show you before it disappears off. Oh my god, it's so cute! It's so tiny! Um, now this is called Good Old Raglin. Again, I don't remember the designer so I'll put them up there. But another really good pattern. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it had lots of sizes. I think this was the second size. This hat, I think... Did I make, I think I made the second size of that as well. So I think I'm going three to six months, I believe. Um, yeah, so it's quite simple. I did change the striping though. In the pattern, the striping starts under the arm, but I just wanted it to go sort of, a, I'd seen 
I'd seen a different pattern where it did the striping like this and I really liked it but it was made up with like where you make the front and the back and the sleeves all separate and then you seam it all together and I thought oh I don't want to do all that whereas this is, was all made in the round which is much easier um, the only thing I'm not entirely happy with is my stripes don't show up very well the grey I chose, although it's quite a good match ish um, it doesn't quite show up against the green quite as well so maybe I should have gone for a bit a bit lighter or a bit darker maybe but again it was stash yarn so that was fine um, oh and the only modification I made apart from the stripe placement was the neckline um, it didn't specify but I made a tubular cast on because I just thought it would make the neck nice and sort of stretchy and you want quite a lot of stretch to get over a little baby head don't you so yeah so I did change that and uh, I think that's all the change I made I'll just show you the back because I used the sort of joggler's jog to try and get the stripes to kind of um, you know go straight which seems to work quite well the colour works quite well I think you can sort of see a little bit that there's something gone on there's the seam by the way maybe you couldn't see it and so it was so successful you couldn't tell but I think you can just about see there's something going on <laughs> yeah um, again this was made no I said that that it was made with stash yarn but this was some King Cole Smooth Decay or Smoothie? No, King Cole Smooth, I think it is. I'll put it in show notes. And I think the colour was sage. But I'd got it for um, a granny square blanket I made quite a while ago because I wanted this sort of lovely green in it. I thought it was just a really nice colour. And I kind of wildly overestimated how many I'd need. So I had two and at least two and a half balls more moot left over but this took a bit over one um yeah just one and a few sort of grams off the other really maybe 10 grams off the other and then obviously just a little bit for the stripes so i thought that was a fun little project it's so good making baby stuff because it come you know you get a finish so quickly Took me a bit longer than two nights to make that one, but not that much more. Yeah, so that's my little um, contribution for her baby shower. Um, what else have I got to show you? I'll show you. This is kind of a work in progress, but it's also a finished item. Um, it's my flower garden quilt blocks that I'm making. Ooh. Why did everything go massively white there? That was strange. Um, I've showed you this on a previous podcast. Can't, blah, blah, blah. Can't talk. On a previous podcast. Um, but I can't remember which one. So what it is, is I've signed up to the Flower Garden Quilt um, sort of yearly subscription thingy on the Alice Caroline website who I always want to say Alice Cooper every time. As soon as I say Alice, Cooper wants to follow. And then each month you get a box with all the things you need to make some hexagon blocks in. So this is my February blocks. This one's my favourite. Um, so I've made my January ones and I showed you those and this is my February ones I've made up now. So you don't get the box till about halfway through the month. Um, so I've got my March box now, so I finished these a couple of weeks ago, but I just wanted to show you them now they're all done. So there's that one, there's also this one, and it's all Liberty Fabrics. I'm not sure, she was, there were still some sign-ups for some places left last time I spoke about this, but I think the last few spaces she was advertising the other week so they may have gone now um, so there's that one and this month we got a half block as well which is this one which I also really like I really like this fabric here look at that well I like lots of the fabric it's all Liberty fabrics did I say that I fear I'm being repetitive probably I am 
Yeah, so in the first box, January box, there were two full-size blocks and a little sewing pouch. Um, and then in the February box, we've had two whole and one half blocks. And then in the March blocks, we've got three whole hexagon blocks. So feeling slightly intimidated by that. Um, I've only made a start on my first one. I have got all my pieces cut out and ready to go. So you get all the sort of the papers and all the fabric and all the sort of diagrams about how to lay it out and sew it together for each one. So it's quite fun to do. I do enjoy it, but it's also quite time consuming. So I'm not sure I'll keep up with the pace if it's going to be about three or, you know, two and a half blocks every month. I may have to eke mine out a bit longer, but that's okay. Cause I just get to enjoy it for longer then, don't I? So that's fine. Um, and this one to talk about. So I made some more of the wondrous dishcloths. So these are by Jules, who is lovely so sweet Violet. Hello Jules, by the way, this is my second mention for you today. Um, yes, it's her wondrous dishcloth pattern. It's a really cute little pattern. It's actually, the pattern is for four play yarn um, and this is double knit that I've used. So I, I'm just modified mine slightly to make them a bit smaller. Um, because obviously in double knit it would have come out bigger so I just make them a little bit smaller but hopefully they come out the same size <laughs> I was just running that sentence ahead in my head and I thought it's not going to make any sense I think the overall finished item is the size intended in the pattern but because I'm using a larger yarn I just reduce the stitch count and repeat slightly to get the same effect that's what I'm trying to say. So I did these partly because I just really like using these cloths in my kitchen and it's I like to have different coloured ones because that's the sort of thing that pleases my little mind. Um, so partly that and partly because Starcraft have launched this new yarn and they sent me some balls and I wanted something to try it out on. So these were the three they sent me. So it's the Naturals Organic Cotton, as you can see there. So they already have in the Naturals range, I didn't realise there was going to be more than sort of one thing. So they had a Naturals Cotton, which is a bamboo and cotton mix, which I really love and I use it a lot. And it's got some gorgeous colours. I think they launched it in about 36 colours, maybe? I'm not sure if that number's correct, but... Anyway, gorgeous colours, gorgeous yarn, gorgeous feel. Anyway, so now this is also another Naturals one, but this is a fully 100% cotton, but it's organic cotton. And again, they've launched it, I think, in the same number of colours, whatever that number is. Um, but again, gorgeous, gorgeous shades, really lovely palette. I've actually got the shades. Let me just grab them to show you. Don't forget that so you can see them all. There we go. Yeah. Sort of. There you go. Not very expertly done, but you get the idea. There's lots of lovely colours in there. There's lots of choice rather and just lovely colours. Look at the greens they've got. Really beautiful. And these really lovely soft pinks. So pretty. I'm just missing one colour, which is this one. I think um, there was a mix up and they put the, young, the wrong sample on there. So I just happened to do an order at Werewolf House the other day. And um, yeah, I just added that one colour on. So I can knit another dishcloth out of that as well now I've got it. But I just wanted to <laughs> fill the missing colour in. But, you know, I wouldn't have ordered it especially. But as I was adding to order and it gets you free delivery, I thought, why not? But that's also another lovely golden shade, isn't it? What's it called? Citron. Yes, yeah, so um, what can I tell you about it other than that? I was a little bit wary actually. This is why I chose a knitting project. Because it's cotton, I was a little bit worried about crocheting with it because I seem to be really struggling with that sort of tougher, harder yarns like cotton lately. It just makes my hand ache to crochet with them. So I thought, I won't crochet, but I'll try knitting. Um, but actually... I think I might try crocheting with them as well because it was really 
lovely to knit. It's also it's almost got so it's very matte the yarn. As you can see it doesn't shine and the finished object doesn't shine. So it's really lovely matte texture to it but at the same time when you feel it it's like it's got a sort of nice kind of sheen to it. I don't know how to describe it. Almost like sort of satin like. It's not shiny and mercerized at all but it's almost got a lovely sort of sheen to the feel of it. So it's very sort of soft. It doesn't feel stiff and it really knit like butter on the needles really smoothly and silkily. So I'm wondering, I think I might dare attempt to crochet with it and see what that feels like. I'll have to get back to you about that because it's a bit like with the um, the other naturals, the bamboo and cotton, just the fact that it's got the bamboo in it and it makes it glide a little bit more, I can crochet with that okay. I don't do loads with it but it certainly doesn't make my hand ache like normal cotton does, especially the sort of unmercerized sort of really matte cotton. So yeah, so I might try crocheting with this as well and see how that compares because it feels like it's going to be okay. I hope so because then it'll be a sort of way I can still use a cottony yarn because I really wouldn't want to make anything very big at all in cotton at the moment. But yeah, I don't know if you've seen it, it's out in all the shops now. Um, yeah, I think it's really lovely that they've gone for such a nice range of colours and also that they've gone for something organic. So yeah, that's really good. They're doing some really lovely things, aren't they, Starcraft lately? The bamboo version I love, this version I love. It's exciting, isn't it, to see what new things come out for us to play with. Um, so yes, so that was a little finished object. Um, and then the other two things I've got to talk about are over here. So I'll talk about this one first. So there's not a lot to say really. Um, I showed you this last time. But I just wanted to show you that I've made a bit of progress on it. Um, I won't go into the whole story again. It's in the last podcast if you particularly want to know. But basically I saw a cardigan in a film a long time ago that made me want to crochet this sort of garment out of these tiny little motifs. And then I was watching Emma, the more recent version of Emma, and it popped up again. And so it tipped me over the edge and I've actually started making something this time. In the film it's like a little kind of cropped cardigan, it's got long sleeves and just a little ribbon tie at the front I think. I'm not sure that's what I'm going to do. I might make mine into like a sort of a top more like this. It's like a jumper and maybe like just a short sleeve. I don't know. This is why I'm kind of working on a square that could be the back so if I decide to do a cardigan I could still do a cardigan and if I decide to do a jumper then i still got the option. But at some point I'll have to make a decision so that would be the edge if it was a cardigan, it's quite cute, but I just quite like that, how it looks like that, I thought it look, might look nice as a little, I think I'd probably keep the neck quite shallow like that as well, like a sort of, is it a boat neck they call it, where it's quite wide like that? Yeah. I don't know, but I thought I'd show you that it is growing. Obviously it's quite a slow moving project. And the ends, oh my word, I know, I know, the ends. I've just, maybe there's some fancy, dancy, clever way of doing this that you could do it and keep going. I don't know, but I'm just using individual motifs and I'm joining them as I go along. So there's loads of ends, but I want, you know, I want them to be different colours so I wouldn't want it all to be one colour if even if I could work out a way to do it in a more clever less individual motives kind of way I want them all to be different coloured so I kind of want to do it like this anyway so yeah so I make up square uh, circles like this so I make a circle in every colour that I've got and I weave in all the ends and then I start to join them with the little squares. I don't know if you can tell, some are circles, some are squares. Um, 
and yeah once I've joined sort of seven or eight on I weave in those ends and then I join another few and weave in those ends and that's how I've got to this size so far <laughs> yeah I'm quite pleased how quickly that's coming along considering I haven't spent that much time on it it feels like I don't spend that much time on any individual thing at the minute but somehow they're all coming along okay which is an unusual and uncharacteristic sort of um, level of patience for me really right so the last thing I've got to talk about is this top um, which I could have worn actually couldn't I that might have been easier <laughs> so I made this a long time ago quite a few years ago and I've been meaning to write it up as a pattern um, so I have basically is the short version of that and I kind of want some testers for it so they're just square motifs I've joined them together using join as you go it's quite simple they're just sort of laid out in a kind of you know quite simple way um, in terms of you know there isn't like shaping and stuff it's just squares so I've just joined squares together is what I'm saying with the simple um, as for the pattern level I guess it's kind of intermediate there's some cluster stitches in there and obviously the join as you go you'll have to be familiar with that technique um, yeah and then just added some little edgings so the design itself is quite simple I think yeah so I've got quite a range of sizes I I've kind of constrained a little bit by I've got a square so there's only so many configurations of these squares that you can arrange to make certain sizes that are going to fit on a human body at all yeah so it'd be good I think to get some testers on this for the pattern make sure there's no mistakes in the pattern obviously but also just to sort of have a look at how the fittings going to work on sort of some different shapes and body types and things um, just sort of make sure you know it's all very well going by what's written down isn't it in the standard guidelines but people generally aren't standard are they so yeah it'd be interesting to sort of see how it fits on real bodies I think but yeah if you'd be interested in that if you've ever tested before that would be great because um, you know what's involved you know there can be if mistakes are picked up it can mean some frogging back and things so it's not all <laughs> plain sailing always but yeah if you'd be interested in doing that um, if you could let me know how are you going to let me know if you go across to my website go to the contact me page so go to cherryheart.co.uk scroll down to the bottom and um, there's a contact me and yeah if you just give me your details that way and let me know I was going to say let me know what size you want to test but I haven't told you what sizes are in the pattern so you can't um, but just let me know and I'll email you and we'll sort it out from there <laughs> let's just go with that um, I think that's probably it from me um, I haven't really got any incoming well I haven't got any incoming goodies to show you um, and I don't think there's anything else I talk about oh well this was my pips section I suppose my pattern in progress section so that's that um, yeah the only other thing I've got is some in, um, Easter vloggy footage I've started taking some um, so I don't know if I'll put this on the end of this video depends when I get this video sorted and out or whether I'll do it as a separate thing but yeah, I've got some that may appear at some point. Informative as ever. Yes, anyway, <laughs> I think that's probably it for me for today. Thank you for watching. Um, if you liked the video and want to press like, that would be fabulous. If you'd liked watching and you'd like to subscribe, also fabulous. Um, <laughs> um, yes, have a good time until I see you again. And I hope you get some lovely crafty moments to enjoy. Bye.